Hello, Dr. Evangelos Milamas of Kinetic Health. Today we'll be discussing a nerve flossing exercise for the obturator nerve. Now before we get started, let's discuss a bit about the anatomy. What is the obturator nerve? Well, it's a nerve that comes off the lumbar spine, specifically off the second, third, and fourth nerve roots. The nerve dives down through the pelvis, just to the inside of the hip flexor, the iliopsoas muscles, and it innervates two specific areas. So what happens is the nerve actually splits into two. It comes into the inner thigh, the adductor area, so it innervates the muscles, the adductor muscles, but it also innervates a muscle here in the glute, slightly deep, called the obturator externus. Now why this is important is because if there's a compression or an injury to this nerve, you may experience symptoms in two different areas or in one area. You might have a burning or a bit of pain here, but you also may have symptoms here. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to have Mickey help us demonstrate how we can test to see whether this nerve is involved or whether it's not. Now let's say in Mickey's case she was experiencing some inner thigh pain on the left side. So as she moves her thigh out, she feels a pulling, maybe a bit of pain and burning sensation. Now the question is, is it the nerve that's involved or the muscles? A really simple way to test this is by creating tension on that nerve and then releasing tension to see whether the symptoms change. So to start out, we're going to have Mickey place her hands behind her back. Now this creates a nice rigid column which will help us to uh, test the nerve in a better way. We're going to have her bring the chin down. So as she brings her chin down, she's tensioning the, the spinal cord increasing tension on that nerve, but what's fascinating about our human body is that the nervous system is continuous. So everything from the brain stem down as the nerves penetrate all the tissues and radiate throughout our bodies, they're all interconnected. Tension on one area is going to affect structures in another area. So by doing this, she's already increased tension. We're going to have her move out the affected leg. Okay. And so at this point, she'd be experiencing some pain, some discomfort, maybe some burning. Okay, now have Mickey uh, look up slowly. So by doing this, she's releasing the tension, allowing the nerve to relax. If the symptoms go away, then we know that the nerve is involved. If the symptoms stay in that area, then you know, we have to dig in a bit deeper and, and figure out which of the soft tissue structures it may be. So really simple, effective way to see whether the obturator nerve is involved. Now let's say that we've determined that the obturator nerve is involved. So the first exercise we're going to do is a nerve flossing exercise. And that's going to create motion, a glide, movement in the nerve so that we can free up wherever it, it's being entrapped between all the soft tissue structures. So we've got Mickey here once again to demonstrate, bringing the arms behind. We're going to start in this position again, creating that rigid column. Uh, Mickey's going to bring her chin down slowly, so that's going to increase the tension slightly. And now this is a dynamic exercise. So you're going to be moving your leg out back and in at a nice, uh, good pace. Not too fast, but not too slow. So we're gonna have Mickey start and bring that leg out. As she does this, she's gonna look up. So this is releasing the tension in the spinal column, allowing the nerve to glide outwards as she does this. So just keep the motion nice and fluid, perfect. So bringing back, creating a bit of tension, bringing the leg out, allowing that nerve to slide down and out. Perfect. How's that feel? That's good. Great. Now, this exercise you'd want to do at least 15 to 20 times, and you'd want to perform this about four to five times in a day. So you can do this pretty much anywhere, at work, at home, whenever you get a break, you can take a small uh, two or three minutes for yourself and get out there and really mobilize that nerve if you're suffering from an obturator nerve entrapment. It's just a great exercise. Great job. Now let's say you've been performing this exercise for two to three weeks and your symptoms are decreasing, but haven't been completely eliminated. Then you'd want to do a nerve tensioning exercise. And the difference being here is that this time we're going to stretch the nerve in two different directions, rather than the gliding exercise where we were stretching the nerve in one direction. So in order to do this, we're going to start out in the same position. We're going to have Mickey bring her hands behind. Perfect. But this time, uh, the head motion is going to be the opposite to the last exercise. So as Mickey's leg moves out, she's actually going to be bringing her chin down. And as she comes back, she's going to look up. So we'll walk you through this here. So let's start out by uh, yeah, bringing the chin down and now slowly bring that leg out. And once again, it's a dynamic exercise. So she's going to come back in and look up. Perfect. So let's go down again. So as Mickey's moving out, that nerve is being pulled out and up this way. So you're getting 
a tension. You're stretching that nerve in two different directions. And this is more aggressive than the last exercise. It's definitely something that you don't want to do in the beginning stages when you've first been injured, but as your symptoms get better and you're able to perform more exercises, this is a great way to free up the nerve and break up any, any residual restrictions that may be you know, pinching down on it. So it's a great way to just move further and resolve that obturator nerve entrapment. How's that feel? That's good. You can definitely feel more tension as you're breathing yes. out. Yeah. Great, it's just a fabulous exercise.